Hello everyone! In this video we're going to be solving a geometry puzzle. If you like this video please comment, like and subscribe and hit the bell button for notifications and let's get started. So we do have four congruent semicircles with radius r that are inscribed in a unit square so that the centers of the semicircles are on the sides of the square and we're supposed to find the radius. Okay, so this could be considered an easy-ish puzzle because of the method we use or just in general it's not too complicated. But it's a really nice puzzle. I just like the symmetry of this puzzle. If you kind of rotate it, uh, you're going to get some really cool uh, symmetry here. Okay, so let's start by making a connection. All right, and I, I'm not going to need a bunch of connections here. That's probably what makes this puzzle easy-ish. I'm only going to make one connection. Okay, cool. So I'm going to start and uh, at the center here and I'll connect that center to the center of another semicircle. Of course, they are kind of next to each other, right? Or they're touching each other. Okay, cool. Now, what does this give us? First of all, notice that the radius of the semicircle is R. So this is R and this is also R. Okay, now obviously we do get a right triangle here and we want to use the Pythagorean theorem, right? And how do we do that? Well, this is also R. This is R, this is R, and this is also R. Okay, a lot of R's. So it looks like from this picture, the hypotenuse of my right triangle, which is this one here, that's a 90 degree angle, right? Is 2R. And the height of the triangle is R. Beautiful. Okay, cool. Then can I not find the base of the triangle? Absolutely, I can do that. But there's also different ways to approach it. So I'll probably present both methods here. So one of the first approaches is basically, notice that this is also R, right? And we know that the side length for the square is one. So if you're looking for the base of the triangle, I can basically call that one minus R, right? So this would be one minus R, beautiful. Now, how can we proceed? We can definitely proceed with the Pythagorean theorem. So let's go on and use the Pythagorean theorem in this right triangle. And I'm going to be presenting the alternative solution method as well. Okay, cool. Now, what is the first method? Well, the first method is r squared plus 1 minus r squared is equal to 2r quantity square. So I'm basically using the Pythagorean theorem without really making any assumptions about this triangle or using any special kind of rules. What I'm trying to do is just use the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, it kind of looks straightforward, even though it complicates things a little bit. Okay, so let's go ahead and expand this. Uh, this is going to give me 1 minus 2r plus r squared. And on the right hand side, we should be getting 4r squared. Now notice that this these two will make 2r squared subtracted from 4r squared you should be getting 2r squared on the right hand side, add 2r to both sides, you should be getting positive 2r, and then finally subtract 1, and you should be getting this quadratic equation. Okay, the reason why I said complicated is because it's quadratic, and quadratic equations are really complicated, aren't they? No, not really. So, how do we solve this? Well, we have a formula for it, because this doesn't look factorable. Even if it is, it's not obvious, and it's not factorable. Okay, so negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 4, minus 4 times a times c. c is negative 1, so the product here, you know that I'm going to erase it, right? So the product here is going to be a negative product because of the minus sign. It is going to turn into a plus sign. So we're going to be adding basically 4 plus 8, which is 12. So r is going to equal negative 2 plus minus the square root of 12 plus 4. And as you know, this is going to split into two solutions. One of them is going to be negative 2 plus, and square root of 12 can be written as 2 root 3, and then just divide by 4. And the other solution, you can call these r1 and r2 if you want. Negative 2 minus 2 root 3 over 4. Obviously, the second solution, r2, is a negative value. So we're not going to be able to accept that, right? Okay, so this is not acceptable. So we're going to go with this. Is that a valid solution? Well, that is, that's the only solution we have, right? And we can simplify that. So from here, the r value is found to be square root of 3 minus 1 over 2. And that's going to give us the radius that we're looking for. Now, what is an alternative to this problem? Obviously, 
there is an easier way to approach it, right? If you look at this picture very carefully, you probably noticed that when I was doing this first, but I just wanted to give you the more complicated way first, right? Because, because it's no pain, no gain, right? So what is the easier method here? Well, if you look at this triangle very carefully, and you should actually have an eye for this, the height is r and the hypotenuse is 2r. What is that supposed to mean? It means that the hypotenuse is twice the shorter leg. What does that tell you? Well, the hypotenuse is twice the shorter leg means that is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. There you go. Okay, great. And that's a special triangle. That's why we, we're going to use this special property. What is that supposed to mean? Well, if that's the case, then we can safely say that the longer leg is just going to be root 3 times the shorter leg. Therefore, 1 minus r is going to equal, which is this length here, is going to equal r times square root of 3, which I can write as score, square root of 3 r. Awesome. What is that supposed to mean? Well, from here we can solve for r, and obviously this is a linear equation. Super easy to solve, right? So we're going to bring these two together, and that's going to give me square root of 3 plus 1 times r is equal to 1. So this is kind of like a fancy ending because we're going to be rationalizing the denominator here. So divide both sides by root 3 plus 1. And then, of course, at this point, you would just go ahead and multiply by the conjugates, right? Root 3 minus 1, top and the bottom. And this is going to give you root 3 minus 1 in the numerator. And the bottom is going to be, from difference of two squares, 3 minus 1, which is 2. And that gives us the exact same value. And that 2 shouldn't be there because we don't need it. Okay, so basically, we got the same answer, obviously, right, from two different methods. And this is easier because as soon as you see that property, 30, 60, 90, you should definitely go for that. But I just wanted to show you the alternative methods. So this brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please comment, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, bye-bye.